All right, guys, welcome to my much anticipated, uh, much requested tutorial on Markdown. And specifically, what I'm going to be covering in this video is not everything you can do in Markdown. Obviously, uh, there's a ton of functionality, uh, a lot of ways that uh, you can write things, and even multiple ways to do the same thing. Uh, of course, you can write pretty much any of the HTML you can include in Markdown as well. And there's like shorthands for a lot of these things as well. But specifically what I want to cover in this video is, you know, the minimum you need to know uh, to get started writing your notes, taking your notes in Markdown and converting them into amazing reports when you're all said and done. So this is going to be a much more targeted video towards um, pen testing, right? Because let's face it, that's why most of you guys are probably here anyways. And specifically, this is how I tend to use Markdown when I'm taking notes and I'm writing reports. So, um, you know, your, your usage of it may differ from me, most certainly. So I just want to make that disclaimer before we get into it. So what I have here for you is uh, an Nmap scan that I ran on a box that I did recently. This is one of the Try Hack Me boxes. So, spoiler alert a little bit, I suppose, for, uh, what is this box? Volnet uh, roast, Roasting, I think it's called. But, uh, yeah. So, I have a scan here. Um, so, typically, what I would do is, right when I start a box, I'll open up Obsidian. This is my note-taking application of choice. And uh, let's see, hopefully this is large enough. We might need to, here we go, make it larger for you guys. There we go. So you'll be able to see it, whatever you're viewing on. So the first thing I like to do is I like to start off with two pound signs and recon. This is basically like a header two tag, I believe. And the reason I prefer this over, the, over doing one, if you do one, it's going to underline it. Uh, you can't see it in in Obsidian, but if I were to export this to a PDF, there would be an under a, a line going all the way across. So uh, that kind of, in my opinion, looks ugly on reports and stuff. So that's why I prefer to add two of these here. I would put the box name uh, up here. So let's just say this box is called test, but uh, whatever the name of the box is, I'll include as the name of the file. And this is just my per, uh, my preferred way to do it, by the way, of course. Everything in here is my preference. But uh, we'll focus on teaching you the uh, the markdown, right? So if I do three of these, um, this is what I normally do next, and I say Nmap. So I'm going to run an Nmap scan. And what I want to do is I want to include the output of my Nmap scan in my reports, typically, is what I do. Um, or at least for my note-taking purposes, right? So you what you can do, actually, if you write a back tick, you can write any code. So if I just wrote something like, um, I don't know, we'll do the Python. Everyone knows the uh, Python spawning uh, bash with Python, right? So I could do something like this, right? This is a common command you would run. Of course, this is unrelated to Nmap. This is just for a, the sake of example here. Now, if I write it, you know, just like this, it's not going to look, um, it's not going to stand out, right? But what I can do is I could enclose this in backticks, and then it uh, it appears a little bit more distinct, right? It's in this little code block. It recognizes it as code, but I can go a step further. If I really want to make it known what this is, I could have uh, three backticks, uh, and then I could even have, like, multiple lines, basically, of code. And so say I had another line... All right, so I could keep going with uh, with code block where I can maybe copy paste a bunch of code and have it in here, and it'd be very clear to see, especially when we export this into the report format into a PDF, it'd be very apparent to see, as you'll see in a second. Now, what's even more than this, right? Right now, you can't really. There's no syntax highlighting, nothing. Well, you can actually get syntax highlighting. In this case, we're dealing with Bash, so we type Bash. If we were dealing with um, bunch of Python code, we could type Python here, or we could type whatever programming language or even script, uh, you know, shell language we're using, we could type it here. And now look at that, we have syntax highlighting. Pretty awesome, right? Uh, I certainly think so. So uh, from here, let's, let's go back to the practical scenario, right? We ran our Nmap scan, and uh, you know, 
we'll say it's bash, right? Because it's going to output in the bash terminal. This is just typically what I do. Maybe there's a different, a better format for this, but this is just typically what I would use. So if I go here, I can uh, copy the scan, uh, the scan data, come in here, paste it in, and just close it out. And if we look here, now we see a uh, really nice Nmap output. So really cool stuff. And uh, from there, right, we can just keep going like so, you know. I, I normally like to look at, you know, if I, say I'm looking at um, a, a particular port. I'll normally make note of that. So SMB, we'll say SMB TCP 445. And then I'll start taking my notes related to SMB. And anytime there is code blocks and things that I need to include, I simply, you know, say what language it is, if it's bash or whatever. I paste in the code. Right, I close it out, and then I'm good to go. Simple as that. And uh, as well, if there's any screenshots, you know, a lot of times there's screenshots, things that are maybe it's best captured by a screenshot versus copying, pasting the text, or maybe it's like a website or something like that where, you know, you need to be able to have a screen cap of something. You know, I could, let me just exit out of all this. This is where I use Flameshot. And if you don't have it already on your system, just do an app install Flameshot. And uh, you might need to run it. Here, let me just mention this real quick. You might need to run it. So you can just go up here, type Flameshot, click, and then you'll see this little icon appear in the top right. And then, yeah, you can just take your screenshots, edit them up however you want. When you're done, click this to copy to your clipboard. And uh, then I can come over here. I can paste it in. And we see we have that image. Now, you don't have to use flame shot, of course. You could use snipping tool. That's what I used to do back in the day, right? You could totally do that as well if you want. But as you see, it's really nice. You, all you have to do is paste it in. You don't have to worry about, you know, the path where it's located and all that. It's going to throw it in to your working directory here, I believe, by default. So there you have it. Now, let's look at a full-on practical example of of this because there's probably some markdown I might have forgotten to mention but these are mainly the it's really simple with markdown this is as simple as that this is mostly what I'm using here let's look at you know we we're looking at the box earlier uh the volnet one let's take a look at that and uh, let me touch up that report as well right so if I go in and pull that one up maybe make this a little bit smaller we see here that uh, I'm pretty much following the same steps that I'm telling you guys, right? Recon, Nmap, got my Nmap scan. And then just as a quick shorthand, I can see at a glance which ports are open and what they are. I sometimes like to write out the ports. And uh, yeah, one issue when you, when you look at a report that I noticed, in my opinion, right, is that some of these sections, the, the spaces are just, it's not enough space in my opinion, right? Now, what you might notice is that if I just add another space here, it doesn't actually re uh, register more than one space. So, I mean, I could add, like, tons of spaces. It doesn't matter. It's not going to recognize it. How do, we, how do we solve this issue, right? Well, what we actually want to do, if we want more than uh, one space, we can add a BR tag, just like you would in HTML. Uh, for some reason, they like you to close out the BR tag, unlike HTML. Um... So just keep that in mind. But if I do that, now you see there is an extra space. So I can go about doing that where I want to really emphasize something, make something stand out. I can add more than just the one space, right? Now, another thing I should mention is that sometimes when you have, you know, text, right? And then you have code or if you have, you know, some other text, and and you you uh, you don't have lines in between them. I don't. I think Obsidian might change the uh, might be changing this here. But I know for a fact that some of the times I've seen these display on the same line in that case. So that's something to to keep in mind. Uh, so what I would do personally, what I always do is that if I want to make sure they're on a different line, I'll add space in between them just to be sure of that. But uh, yeah, really pay attention closely if you have stuff like really close up to each other in Markdown because sometimes they'll all display on the same line. Learn that one the hard way so you guys don't have to. 
but see here, right? I like the spacing here. If I wanted more spacing, I could add a space. And uh, it does add a little bit more room. But we'll keep that like that for now. Make this more consistent. And I, as you see, yeah, I'm mostly just using the back ticks and uh, the pound sign stuff as well. And, uh, yeah, I can go in and add sections, add new lines, all that stuff. I probably should touch up this report a little more, but let's just say that we are ready to export this into a PDF, right? So if I look at what I did there is I hit control L alternatively, you could just click up here and it'll change it to like your, your view mode, if you will. Right. That way I can see what this would look like as a finished product or at least get an idea. Right. So I can scroll through here, make sure there's no abnormalities, anything I don't like. And, uh, yeah, it looks cool so far. And that's cool as well how, like, when you copy the code, it'll even, it'll even get those um, symbols and stuff there. Oh, one thing that I do a lot when I'm dealing with Windows is I like to use Batch or PowerShell here to tell it. And then you got some pretty good syntax highlighting. Not, not perfect as you see. Right, but, uh, you know, better than no syntax highlighting, at least in my opinion. So, sorry if I'm spoiling this box for you guys. I'll try to make that clear at the beginning of the video. But, okay, let's say I'm satisfied with this and I want to, you know, create this as a report. All I need to do in Obsidian is click the more options up here and just say export to PDF. So, let's export. So, as soon as I do it, actually opened it up for me automatically. And uh, looks like Adblock has been updated, so that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, here we go. We see, I mean, obviously, I didn't really touch this up much, but isn't that, like, really awesome how you have um, the way this does it? I've seen different, um, there's different tools you have available. You don't have to do it through Obsidian, but I figure, you know, if I'm using Obsidian to write my notes, why not just do the export feature there? I've seen um, where you can have it as a different background and stuff. I believe that you can even uh, incorporate CSS files for a very customized uh, look to your code blocks and your layout of everything. So this goes really deep, but I like the way that it looks when you export it from Obsidian. I like the black background uh, on your code blocks. But yeah, there you see a really nice full-featured report, something that I threw together as I was doing the box pretty much, which is really nice. Way better than the old and ugly... Uh, OneNote method that I used to use. You know, a lot of you guys are probably using my notes from OneNote, but I'm in the process of converting them over. And, uh, of course, I'll make the notes available to you guys, or at least provide a way that you guys can get them if you want them in the future. But, yeah, this is my new way of uh, taking notes, and there's really no going back once you once you once you go down the path of, uh, of Markdown. So hopefully this helped you guys out, get an idea of how to use it. It's very simple, very basic. Uh, obviously, there's more you can do with it. And, uh, you know, feel free to check out the tons and tons of reference uh, material find online for that stuff when the situation arises. But just to get yourself going, uh, just to get up and running using this stuff is pretty much what I would say all you need to know. So let me know if I forgot anything major down in the comment section below. And, uh, you know, let me know what you think of the video by hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel as well to help out in the algorithms. And if you guys want to get into some more technical content, I got that on the screen right now. See you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.